welcome, welcome, welcome to Jesse James Beads. How are you doing today? I hope that your day so far has been absolutely wonderful. I know I've had a really lovely day today. Even though the weather's a little bit up and down here in Blighty, I hope that where you are, you are keeping safe and well. Give me a quick wave to let me know that you're there and I'm not talking to myself like Billy No Mates. We have got for you today Songs of Spring. Now I won't sing for one reason, I don't have a great voice. And for another reason, I'm just a little bit hoarse, so it'd be even worse than usual, which would be quite, quite scary. So I'm going to be working today with the MMBB, the Magical Mystery Bead Box for March. Now I know that you had an unboxing video yesterday, but I am, in case you missed that, going to give you a quick flash of the strands and the bead mixes and the beautiful components that you get in this month's bead box. It's a beautiful collection, such glorious pastel tones with some real smashing beads in there too. Florence is in from Ocala in Florida. Hello darling, how are you? And Hazel has joined us. Hello Hazel. I hope that wherever you are in the world you are keeping well and safe let's have a quick look very very briefly at today's project this is the pendant we're going to make together now we're going to have the option to play around with what kind of beads you want up here and down here because the collection that I've chosen to use from the magical mystery bead box for March is best buds my lighting is uh, trying to over illuminate that at the moment, but there we go. Anne is in from California. Hello, Anne. How are you today, my darling? So Best Buds is part and parcel of this month's, well, technically last month's, but there you go. The March 2023 Magical Mystery Bead Box. I adore this watercolour effect card. Now, I don't know about you. But I keep all my postcards. I keep all of them from every Magical Mystery Bead Box I've ever received. It's a nice way to look back and also to be inspired as well. Never mind what time of the year it is, there's going to be something lovely to work with. So this is the box we're going to work with today. Let me just pop these beads out of the way for a moment. And I'll give you just a very quick look. Bluebird songs. Look at those gorgeous enamel pendants in there really really beautiful so that's one of your bead mixes in this month's bead box and says i'm doing well how are you happy thursday to all glad to hear you're well my lovely so we've also got this gorgeous it's almost like a disco chain circles with jewel holes so that's going to be really quite easy to take apart and make into lovely drop earrings if you wish to celia is in from a chilly lancashire hello my darling so you have got cord and endings to create a, quite a fancy piece there for hanging your beads and your charms from as well. What a lovely colour that is also. I'm going to save my favourite for last. These are gorgeous. Garden Gate Filigree Pendant Pair. Now my tendency with these is to find seed beads or small faceted rondelles and wire them in all the way around the edge. That's just one option. An alternative to that are these gorgeous, they look for all the world like ivory nut wood, which is that technically I think it's a seed, but they are beautiful. I imagine that they're a form of resin, but they're absolutely gorgeous. A white picket fence, you get a pair of those. Seed beads and beautiful, I think they may be lucite flowers, and you've got three very gorgeous colourways to work with there. So I would have no hesitation, even though I'm not a seed beader, I would absolutely use those to wire on to that beautiful filigree pair. Here's another strand that you get. Feels very much like rose quartz. I could be wrong, but it certainly feels like rose quartz. It's a little bit pinker than it's showing on my screen. Like I say, I'm not going to spend too long on today's box because you had an unboxing video yesterday. This is my favourite strand from this month's box. Look at these Cloisanne beads. Aren't they stunning? You've also got these glorious cages. Now you can use them exactly how they're demonstrated on the strand or you can take them apart and set different stones, different beads in there. I quite like the idea of these Cloisanne, the, the beautiful... It's a very glorious blue. It's almost like a pearl blue. So that's a very quick look at the box for March, Songs of Spring. And then we'll get back to looking at the piece we're going to make and the collection that I'm using, which I think was called Best Buds. 
So there's quite a few beads in there to work with. We're definitely going to work with this painted mother of pearl disc. That's an absolute stunner. Really, really beautiful. When you apply paint or transfer in the same way that tenture can be used over a mother of pearl, you get a depth of tonality that you wouldn't get putting the same design onto a plastic bead. So these are an absolutely glorious piece to work with and beautiful fresh spring piece to work with there. This is what we're going to create together today. Now it's quite a flashy little piece but I promise it's not overly complicated. If you are not feeling comfortable with doing wire weaving we can simply do a wrapped loop up at the top. Now I'm sure I've shown you a majillion, bajillion, gazillion wrapped loops before so I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to show you this woven bale which is quite fancy but it's not as tricky as it looks and it might be an idea just for you to have a go and see how you get on with wire weaving. Now we do have the option to change out this tassel I quite like it with this, I'm going to call it again what I always call it, which is a fairy skirt tassel, because that's what they remind me of. Not that I've like hung out with loads of fairies and gone fashion shopping with them or anything, but that's what it looks like to me. So that's the piece we're going to make together. But we do have some choices about which beads or tassels we can use. Would you prefer that I used the Lucite multi-part drop down at the base in place of the fairy skirt, or shall I use the fairy skirt again. I would like to see how to do the woven bale. That is what I'm going to show you today my lovely. As you have seen me do wrapped loops a multitude of times, that's what you can do in place. If you don't fancy this wire wrapping, wire weaving up at the top, if that is not for you then you can pop an oversized plain bale up at the top which is just a wrapped loop. But I am going to show you this design today because it's not as tricky as it looks. So let's grab the fairy skirt out and there you've got this little lucite flower which you've got a pair of which is just going to make perfect earrings anyway. Anne has chosen the fairy skirt to work with today so that is indeed what we shall work with. Now up at the top I chose this disco, I'm going to call it a disco bead, I don't know what it's called really. It's got almost tourmaline watermelon tourmaline colours. You've got sort of a hint of green and a hit of pink on there, which is perfect with this gorgeous painted or transferred mother of pearl bead. So it does team beautifully, but your other option is to go for something with an equally large drill aperture down the middle. So if you wanted to, we could go for this ceramic bead, or we could go for another one of those fairy beads like so disco beads so sorry you do have a lot of lovely gorgeousness now Sarah asked a question on Instagram the other day might have been Instagram might have been facey can't remember and she said when you get a bead mix what are the favorite things that you look for well I guess I'm a magpie because these are the favorite beads in this mix that I always look for and I always think gosh I'm so lucky look at that tone as you turn them over you've got this golden purple on one side which is very reminiscent of ametrine and then flip it to the other side and you've got an aqua blue how lucky is that i adore those beads they're among some of my favorite jesse james beads beads i love saying that beads beads also adore these pink square so they have almost an emerald cut to them this sort of elevated step, they're gorgeous. You've also got a fab collection of ceramics and faux pearls in this one. Not to mention these really cool half painted, like lucite drops. There's a flower that that reminds me of and I can't for the life of me remember what it's called. And if you tell me, I probably won't remember anyway. So we've got the choices about whether you want to go for the ceramic or if you want to go for the disco. I'll just leave one of those out for now. And let's pop these other ones away to one side. It's a lovely collection. It's called Best Buds and it comes in Songs of Spring. Now if you missed out on Songs of Spring and you think that might be for you, I've popped the link in the video description so you can head over and grab yourself one of those boxes. Just going to show you that my favourite strand one last time. I adore this absolutely gorgeous strand. In terms of today's wire, bell flowers, it could be, you never know, it could be. In terms of today's wire, 
primarily we're going to be using 18 gauge round now you can use craft wire or you can use German style wire a lot of people get hung up on what the temper should be for a particular design now I've actually made with craft wire just here but it won't make the slightest bit of difference whether you make that with German style wire, craft wire or indeed the soft wire that I'm going to use. This is a fully annealed raw copper wire. The reason I use this in a lot of my demonstrations and tutorials is because it shows up really nicely on screen. The silver can get lost with the lights that you need to make sure that you can see what my hands are doing. So I've got around about 12 inches here of that 18 gauge wire doesn't matter which one you choose, whatever colour makes you happy. I think it looks pretty in the silver colourway, but we're going to create with a blend actually of copper and rose gold, just because that's what I had to hand. And also it looks pretty when you combine the colours. Hello from Pennsylvania, from Seneca. Deborah, if I've pronounced your hometown incorrectly, please forgive me. Welcome to today's live here on Jesse James Beads. Ah, oh, it's Sarah with her red telephone boxes turning up. Indeed, I was going to sing, but I thought better of it, so maybe I won't. It was probably going to be Feed the Birds from Mary Poppins. Judith, hello from Michigan. Hello to you. I'm glad you're having a beautiful day. So we're about to get started on our main tutorial for today's live, which is this spring inspired pendant. And as I said before, we're working from Songs of Spring, March 2023, MMBB. Conditioning your wire is actually more important than the type of wire you're using. This is 18 gauge, there's around about 12 inches. I'm working with round wire. Mine is soft raw, yours can be anything. I'm conditioning it by running it a couple of times between thumb and forefinger. That just gets it nice and flexible, ready to work. In the long run, it actually makes it slightly harder than when you began, which is great for a design such as this. Basic tools today, we'll be working with some round nose pliers. I'm going to be using my professional flush cutters because they are the bomb. And also my bent chain nose pliers, which I've had since the dawn of time. These are getting on for 13 years old now. They're very, very lovely. Any chain nose pliers will work as long as they have flat surfaces to help you with your bends. These are actually in pretty good nick, I think, after 13 years. The other gauge of wire that we're going to be using for weaving I've got some rose gold colour artistic wire. This is 26 gauge. Thank you very much, Sarah says. It's a pretty pendant. I like to think so. I mentioned earlier on, which you may have missed if you're just joining, if you don't fancy getting into this weaving up at the top, you can very simply do a quick wrapped loop bail and add a spiral on the front. It will look beautiful and it will make in moments. This I wanted to just give you a hint of what you can achieve with wire weaving with a basic figure of eight weave. So this will be coming up to later. Now you can use 26 gauge to set the bead in the circle but I've got a short length here of 24 gauge. It's just slightly stronger. If you don't have any 24 gauge, don't fret, just stick with the 26 gauge. This is coming up in a little while. So we've pre-warmed our wire and what we're going to do is to create a small loop down at the bottom. So for that we're going to use our round nose pliers and we're going to estimate the approximate centre of that length, approximately 12 inches, of that 18 gauge wire. So I'm going to cross those over to create a loop and I want there to be two lines pulling away from each other in basically a straight line. Now you can see I've slightly botched that and the reason I've slightly botched it is because I want to show you how to fix this. So what we're going to do is just straighten up that loop and play with the wires until they cooperate. So now they're sitting, don't worry about this little bend down here for now. What we're looking for is to have a straight line with a loop formed on it. What we're going to do now is just very gently open that loop out. So if I show you that upright, all we're going to do is just pull very, very carefully one side of the loop until you get a little bit of a gap. If you can get your nail through there, it's probably enough. You might want to open that ever so slightly more. And what we're doing now is adding in our fairy skirt. As I mentioned earlier, you could use one of these lucite drops or you could make a pendant of your own. 
whatever makes you happy. Anne chose to use the fairy skirt today, so that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to slide that on one end and just sit that down in the centre of that loop down at the base. Using my fingers, and my fingers only, no tools at this stage, I'm just going to squish that back up. So we've sealed the fairy skirt tassel in position. I'm going to grab my very ancient ring mandrel. It's wooden, it's lightweight, and it doesn't cause too many bangs and boshes when I drop things on my workbench during live tutorials. I do have the most beautiful purple beadle on one. Purple is my favourite colour. Um, but I don't use it on screen purely because if I drop it, it makes a terrible clang, whereas this is quite gentle. So if you don't have yourself a ring mandrel, they are handy, incidentally, but you can use anything that's got a good round shape, just a little bit larger than that gorgeous mother of pearl. I don't know if it's a transfer or painted, but it's, oh, it's beautiful. These are absolutely stunning. As I mentioned earlier on, the depth that you get with a mother of pearl bead over a plain plastic or resin bead is immense. There's nothing quite like it. Really, really lovely. So I'm going to estimate that I would need to use around about here on my mandrel. And what I'm going to do is just support the loop that we made and bring those tails around so that they cross over up at the top. Now, if you misjudge and you make it slightly too small or slightly too large, don't worry, you can usually just fix that by very gently teasing those wires apart. If you have, for instance, a lip gloss or something of a similar size and it's just not quite right, don't fret. You can always use that to get the basic shape and then you can use your pliers. Let's get that mandrel out of the way. So what you may be able to see is that there's too much wire on the right hand side and not enough wire on the left hand side. So in order to fix that I'm going to support that little loop down at the base and I'm going to pull over on the side that had too little and pull in the same direction on the other side and what we're looking to do is to centralise that crossing over so that the bead will sit inside the frame we're creating and have a little bit of a gap around it. Sarah says, love those beads. We choose our own prints for mother of pearl beads. Amazing. Our Rodrigo's favourite is purple too. Well, he has good taste, my darling, as you should very well know. Oh. So I'm just going to play with the shape and form of the wire, very, very carefully pushing those two sides together until I get that to sit around my pendant bead, the flat mother of pearl bead. So it may take a few moments, or you might be lucky and just find something that's exactly the right size. Whatever works is fine. So that's actually starting to look pretty good. We want there to be a tiny gap around that beautiful bead all the way, but not too much of a gap. Once I'm happy with the shape and form, I'm going to turn a couple of upright bends up at the top. Now I usually, if you're very familiar with my work, you'll hear me talk about the 12 o'clock position. So if we imagine that the loop we created is the 6 o'clock position on a clock face, I'm going to turn a 12 o'clock upright on either side, just by very, very carefully, small movements are better. And then because I'm right dominant, I'm going to flip the whole thing over and do the same on the other side. Now you'll see that I need to leave a little bit of a gap between where one angle is and where the second angle is. And the ideal here is to have the same amount of wire skirting round either side. If it's ever so slightly offset, please don't worry. And I'm just going to give that a little bit of heat up at the top there in order that I can get these two wires at the 12 o'clock position to sit perfectly upright. Now, if in doing this you accidentally unround and I realise that's not a word, but you take that off round, don't fret. You can always pop it back on your mandrel and just assist that to sit back where you'd like it to. So we are going to now add a bead up at the top just to make sure that they fit on both of those wires. Now, let me just see if the ceramic bead does go on, whoops, without pushing those two wires too close together. It does. So you can use either. You can use the disco spacer. Sorry, Sarah, I'm making names up for things now. And many, many apologies. I realise it's probably not called a disco spacer, but it jolly well ought to be because it looks a bit like a disco bead. So you can take a second longer than I am today to make sure that your round form is indeed round. And then you can choose either this beautiful earth-coloured ceramic bead, 
which fits on those two wires nicely or you can go for the disco bead so let's bring that disco bead down loads of space there another thing that you can do if it makes your life easier is very very gently hammer this section and this section of the frame I'm not going to hammer today because it's terribly noisy on a live and it might take you unawares and we don't want to make anybody uncomfortable so making sure that that bead does fit nicely inside the frame what I'm going to do is just allow that disco bead to sit down and I'm going to do a little bit of weaving up here on these two upright wires that sit just above the frame. We're going to add that bead in last because it means that I have something much firmer to hold on to. If I set my gorgeous printed mother of pearl bead now, I can quite easily pull out of shape the beautiful round form that we've created. So let's grab that finest wire that we're working with today. This is 26 gauge. Now I've just grabbed some artistic wire in a rose gold colourway because I think it will look really pretty with that hot copper that I'm using. But your wire choices, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't really matter which temper of wire you use as long as you're using wire that makes you happy. Shakisha's in, hello my darling, how are you? Lovely to have your company, love. There we go. So we're trying to keep those right angle bends just up here at the 12 o'clock position relatively even to one another. And we are going to begin by winding the very end of my finer gauge wire. Now my length here is a scrap length that I had available. It's about 12 inches, which is probably a little bit more than we need. So if you've got 12 inches ready to hand, that's all well and good. What I will do, however, is just trim that end off because it's not very tidy. We're going to wrap three times around either one of those upright wires, whichever makes you happy. So I've wrapped twice, and because I'm a little bit on the thrifty side, what I'm going to do is try to show you how to just take that last little bit of wire all the way around. And in times of um, economic flux, shall we say, as the whole world is in right now, being thrifty is a smart idea. So what you'll see is that last little bit of wire has been tucked away neatly and we have three wraps on this side of the wire neckline section. So what I'm going to do now is scooch that all the way down to the bottom. Keeping those coils neat and tidy will make you happier in the long run. So let's push that all the way down and then I'm going to hold those two upright wires quite close together without crossing them over and because the finer gauge wire has come over the top of the what's lower on your screen I'm going to take it down the centre and then up underneath the wire that is higher on your screen so this is a three and three or basket weave so what we're going to do is wrap three times around either side doesn't matter that it's come away for the moment one and let me just bring that slightly higher two get the light right and three and then i'm taking the tail down the center of the wire here tightening those coils up neatly so the wires come down the middle and it's coming underneath the lower wire so i'm going to wrap three times around the lower wire and as long as you're always switching sides it doesn't really matter which side you started on so i've got two wraps on either side and what I'm going to do with those is push them down inside that disco bead and what we're doing here is we're locking the frame in position so ideally by this stage you will have a nice round form to work with if you've upset the round form or you're not happy with it you can always pop that back on your mandrel give that a bit of straightening up give that a bit of a squish and a squeeze make sure that you're happy with it before you proceed Good afternoon, Danielle from Jesse James Beads. How is everyone on this lovely spring day? Do you know what? It's actually been quite nice. I've been in a building all day working, um, which is a bit of a shame. However, it has been beautiful, so I'm very grateful for the weather. So we've hidden those first four little wraps that we've created inside the disco bead. And what I'm going to do is very gently just open up a little bit of a V-shaped space between those two upright wires and keeping them as even as possible will make you happier in the long run so you've just got a slightly gentle opening of those two wires like so don't worry about what's going on on up here for the time being and what we're going to do is to continue in exactly the same vein we're going to wrap three times around that lower wire bring that wire down the center 
underneath the upper wire and then wrap three times around the top. Now if this is befuddlement for you or you simply don't want to do any wire weaving you can at this stage just very simply go for a wrapped loop. Now I have shown you wrapped loops dozens and dozens of times I don't want to get you bored with me. <laughs> Donna is in. Hello Donna. Hi everyone says Donna. Welcome to today's live with Jesse James Beads. If that is for you, then you can simply create a wrapped loop up at the top above that disco bead and you will still have a really beautiful pendant. But the idea behind today's tutorial is to give you a little bit more of an insight into wire weaving and how it can be achievable. So all I'm doing is I'm wrapping three times around one of those upright wires, switching to the other side. Roseanne is in from a warm and sunny Ohio. Welcome. Debbie is in too. Hi everyone, says Debbie. Another Debbie is joining us from Oregon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So switching back to the lower of those two wires for now. Three times on either side and I'm going to keep going. It's not boring. I love weaving wire. What you'll see is we're starting to build up this lovely little frame up at the top. Janet has joined us as well. Good afternoon to you. Thank you for coming in today at Jesse James Beads. So what you will find is that whilst you're working quite close to the bead, it can be a little bit, where on earth do I hold this? And this is another reason that I don't set that gorgeous mother of pearl bead. So you may just need to find your groove. Three times on one side, down the centre three times on the other side, one and two and three, down the centre. And every time I'm doing three, I'm going to give that a teeny tiny scooch just to make that tension look good. And what you'll find is the more time you spend on the tension, the neater your wire weaving will be. If you don't fancy wire weaving, you can just go for that wrapped loop. Maria's in from Buena Park in, I want to say Southern California. I do hope I'm correct there. Jesse James Bead says, we've also been inside all day, breaking out during lunch breaks to take advantage of the sunny weather. Absolutely good idea for you, my darling. Melanie says, hello, dear. It's been way too long. Hello to you, sweet pea. Thanks for joining us. There we go. So I'm going to go for a few more wraps on either side. Now, it's not the greatest television in the world to watch me wrapping three times on one side. Scooch that down, switch to the other side three times on the other side but it will give you an opportunity to see that this is not a technically difficult design and a lot of time I know before I started working with wire weaving it made me think gosh I definitely can't do that but I do want you to know that you absolutely can Carmen's in, Carmen is in hello my darling how are you comments are flying off my screen faster than I can read them right now so welcome 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 Cindy's in from Tracy, is that California as well, my lovely? Welcome to you, sweet pea. So wrapping three times on either side before switching to the other wire. And every time I do those three wraps, I'm scooching it up. Now, if you are precious with your nails, you can very gently use the side of your chain nose pliers to draw that slightly tighter and slightly firmer. So that's one, that's two, that's three. And then switching again. It's not the most interesting thing in the world to watch, but I'm hoping that it's instructional so that you can see it's not difficult. It's just the more time you take to do it, the neater it will be. So I haven't got quite enough weaving there. So just bear with me a few more moments and I'll get a few more turns of the wire into position. Now I'm just going to weave the front half of the pendant for one thing. It takes a lot less wire. For another thing, it's ever so slightly quicker. Now what you are welcome to do is to keep the weaving going and take the woven section on the behind side of the bale. Let me do one more and then I'm going to cut that away because for one thing the wire's wrapping around the camera now. Awesome source. Let's turn that over. Grabbing my flush cutters look twice before you trim to make sure you're cutting the right bit because it's kind of sad when you don't and then we're going to smooth that cut end down so that it's nice and flat and it doesn't impinge anything so we've got the front side of our bale all woven now it really isn't tricky I'm going to show you what this looks like 
So that's the, the woven front here. And at the back, I've just got some plain wire. Now what you can do is bring those two wires back together and weave on the rear side as well. I've elected not to do that because like I say, it's boring enough watching me go three times this side, three times that side. It's just enough, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to replicate the size and distance on that woven section at the back before I splay those wires out in opposite directions. So what we're looking to do is to have almost like a diamond shape. Can't get the pliers in the right position. We're looking to have a diamond shape between the disco bead and where my pliers are. A nice evenly shaped, evenly spaced diamond shape. If you've just joined us, if you don't fancy doing the wire weaving, you can very simply go for a wrapped loop up at the top there. You'll still have a pretty spring pendant with that lovely fairy skirt down at the base. So we have this diamond shape. Now if you are choosing to continue weaving down the back, what you'll need to do is every time you do a pass and then three wraps, scooch the wire up. And you can hold that with one side whilst you bring the wire back down the center, wrap around the other side, scooch that up, and then you will need to hold each time you scooch the wire up so that it doesn't slip down because what it will want to do is take the path of least resistance and it's easier for the wire to be between closer wires. So every time you do a wrap, scooch it up, when you get down to the bottom, just trim away that finer wire. And the next section is almost exactly the same whether or not you weave at the rear or not. So what we're going to do is to bring in a pair of chain nose pliers, mine are my bent chain nose, and we're going to create a forwards bend just a tiny distance above that disco bead, like so. It doesn't need to be the full 90 degrees, it doesn't really even need to be straight because I've just bent that well done me. Where are my bail makers? Here we go. So you can use a slim pencil or pen to create the bail. I'm going to grab my bail makers and see, I think probably number three or number four will be the right size. So what I'm looking to do is to bend that around and draw the rear section, those bent angles, back up so that they join where we created that angle. Now I think I've taken those down a little bit too low. If that happens to you, you can very gently prise them back up and then I will use a slightly larger pin on my bail makers and I'll show you on the rear this time just to bring those back down so that they sit centrally at the back of the bail. Now from the front you've still got this lovely woven bail aesthetic but you've spent much less time doing that weaving. But you do have the option to take it a little bit further over or to weave all the way around, whatever makes you happy. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim one of these tails quite short. Now our heaviest gauge, that 18 gauge wire, which creates the frame, we started off with around 12 inches and I'm going to trim some of that away now. So if you have a length of around about 11 inches, I want to say, that will probably be enough for the project. The more you practice a design like this, the more you'll have an idea of what you can work with in terms of scraps. So what we're going to do is I've trimmed this to around about three quarters of an inch on one side. I'm just going to pull the long tail up out of the way for a moment. And what we're looking to do is to bring this short tail around the front of the design. That's one of those sideways bends from the back there. I'm going to support that sideways bend just right in that angle and draw that tail across the front and what we're doing is we're tying a knot so that's the shorter tail of wire it's come from the base of the bale on the back I've drawn that all the way across the front and I'm going to continue pinching it quite firmly whilst I bring that tail across the back again now you may need to trim just a tiny little bit extra off which is what I'm going to do now so if I flip this over you can see there's a teeny tiny bit extra that's just gone past. Again, look carefully, trim only that last little bit of the correct wire away, because it's kind of sad if you get the wrong wire and you have to start again. Uh, very gently, I'm just going to pinch that, and you now have a fully functional bale. That's not going to go anywhere, but we're going to wrap the longer section of wire now all the way around the front again. So I'm pinching on the angle with my bent chain nose pliers, drawing the wire across the front. Now before I go any further I'm just going to show you what that looks like on the front. So I've drawn it across the front there. We now have a nice solid bale. But because I'm a stickler for making jewellery that's going to last I'm going to take this tail of wire 
all the way around one more time. So I'm going to support across the bail at the back there, bring that tail of wire all the way across the back, flipping it back over so I can bring what is now quite a short tail to the front and with that short tail I'm going to make a coil to sit just above the disco bead. Sarah I appreciate I'm calling your beads all by the wrong name and I'm very sorry about that but there you go. So there's a tiny jagged end on my wire here so I'm just going to trim away the tiniest amount before I turn that into a coil. Coils are not difficult take your time, go steady, and they will start to become a thing of joy for you. So I'm going to rotate that wire around using my round nose pliers until I get a round form. That's not closed up, so I'm just going to give that a very, very gentle squish before I push that into my non-dominant hand, and I'm taking the brunt of the pressure with my forefinger so that I'm not bending my pendant, because I don't really want to do that spent a little bit of time getting this made so I'd like to keep it pristine and then when you get the coil created you can see it's sticking out at the front so what I'm going to do is grip the whole coil and push it back against the bale you can use your thumb just to refine where that sits and you can very very gently tighten that up so that is the main crux of my wire woven bale which is the primarily what I wanted to introduce you to today. I'm just going to tidy up that little bit of weaving so that it sits more neatly and I'm also going to just ensure that I'm super happy with the roundness of that frame before I set the beautiful bead that Sarah has had custom printed for us. Mother of Pearl with a gorgeous, gorgeous floral it's art. It's absolutely gorgeous. So one of my favourite painters is Vincent van Gogh, or van Gogh, if you want to be Dutch about it. And he was obsessed with, as, as obsessed with Japanese art as I am. So when I see a flower like this, it kind of makes me think of Vincent, which is a good thing to think of. So as I mentioned at the head of today's tutorial, I'm using a slightly heavier wire. Now this is just a scrap and it's more than I actually need. So this is 24 gauge round wire. This is just a little bit of raw copper, but it doesn't really matter which temper or type of wire you're using as long as it's round. If you don't have any 24 gauge, don't fret, you will be able to achieve this with the offcut of your 26 gauge wire. If you see them side by side, you can see it's really quite a small difference between them. So for me, what I want to do is have the same number of coils wrapping around either side of the pendant. If you want to, what you can do is completely fill the lower half of this pendant, the frame, with wrapping around and around and around. Now that takes time. Getting it neat is not impossible, perfectly doable. It's just an option. You will need more than a couple of inches of wire though. So, like I said, I've just got a couple of inches of wire here. I'm going to lay that centrally between the 9 o'clock position and the 3 o'clock position on the clock face. And I'm just going to pinch that without the bead in position to begin with. And what I want to do is to make sure that I wrap that super tight. So I'm going to employ my chain nose pliers to help me achieve tension in this coil. Now, every time I do a little coil, let me bring that up to the camera. You can see that's gappy. So what I will do here is just pinch very gently, no longer gappy. So every time I do around about three turns of the wire, I'm going to get in there with the tips of my pliers and just tighten that coil up. So I don't know if you've ever used the beautiful coiling machine, the name of which has just gone out of my head. Gizmo. Yeah, there you go. It came back. So if you've ever used a gizmo, you can get the most wonderful coils of wire with one of those. They're fantastic. But you can also coil by hand. So I've actually lost count, because I've been chatting, of how many coils I've done on this section of frame wire. Never mind, I'm just going to eyeball it. So I want this to sit centrally between the 9 o'clock and the 3 o'clock position. You may need to just move that up or down ever so slightly. And I've coiled it so the finer gauge wire is over the top and the tail goes around the outside. So let's bring that bead into play. Just got to find the drill aperture. Sit that in position neatly. I think that looks absolutely delightful. 
really beautiful. So one thing that I tend to do with a design like this is I want the coils of wire to be in the same orientation. So that's scooched round over so slightly, so I'm just going to move that up just a tiny bit before I get setting the second side. So because the coil of wire comes down towards the fairy skirt, I definitely want the same thing to happen on the other side. So are there any questions? I just need to check the comments. I can't see any questions at the moment. Oh, uh, that is beautiful bead. My faves are the impressionist to lean towards Monet. Totally, totally agree. Which pliers do you use that point flush or something else? I use my chain nose pliers for almost anything. Comments are falling off the screen quicker then I can actually read them. So many apologies. I'll try and catch up on the live. California says, Cindy, wonderful. That's a pretty weave. The thin wire looks almost like sparkling thread. That's one of the reasons I love to weave with wire. Loving this technique, says Maria. Thank you so much. Lilia says, hi, everyone from slightly soggy Georgia. Welcome, my lovely. Which pliers do you use at that point, flush or something else? So I will only be using three sets of pliers throughout today's tutorial. The round nose I have used for the coil and for the loop down at the base. The flush cutters I'm only ever using to trim away the ends of wire. Oh no, that's a fib actually. I used the bail makers to make the bail. Whoopsie. And for the most of my techniques, my trusty 13-year-old bent chain nose pliers. Betty's in from Denver. Hello, sweet pea. How are you? I hope you are well. So I have a tail of wire over here at the 9 o'clock position. And what we need to do is to get this tucked up inside between the bead. What I can do to make that easier to see is allow the bead to scooch out of the way. So that's coming up inside the frame, but what we do want to do is have some good tension. So I actually find it easier to hold on to that bead in position, draw that tail all the way through, and then use my bent chain nose pliers to make that nice and tight. Lucinda, yes, absolutely, this will be on Facey and will later be added to other social media platforms. There we go. So if there are any other uh, questions, I will try to address them later. So I've got just two wraps at the moment, so I'm going to bring that tail up between the bead and the frame, pull that into position, a little bit of a tighten across. You can do that every three wraps or so if it's easier for you. Another thing you can do if you find it tricky to work with the fairy skirt tassel in position is simply add it on later with a jump ring. I like to connect things as I'm going, just makes me happy, that's all. So because we pretty much used the centre of that 24 gauge, and it was just a couple of inches that we used, we're probably going to end up with a similar number of weaves on either side anyway. Uh, Nancy says, very clear directions. Thank you very, very much, my darling. I do like to teach the same way I would like to have been taught, um, which is to make it absolutely unequivocal what it is I'm trying to say. Sometimes I make up words though, so apologies if there are any words that aren't words, because that's just a gemism I'm afraid. Bring that tail up and round one more time, and I think probably that's the similar number. So to tighten up my coils, what I do, and let me just pop this down for a second, is I will have the stripes of wire up the middle, I'll put one side of my bent chain nose pliers at one end of the coil on the upper side, the other side of my pliers on the far end of the coil but on the other side of the wire as well and as you contract those together I'm not going to do that on my finger we've done that on air before and it's a little bit rubbish because it hurts as you contract those two sides of the pliers together you squish the coil up and make it neat in fact I think I might go for just one more just one more around the <laughs> garden as a song by the wonder stuff there we go Let's bring that all the way around, and in order to make this as snag-proof as possible, I'm going to take the tail gently across the back of the bead, just holding the end of it so it doesn't scratch anything, bring those flush cutters in, and I'm going to trim away just past the point that it goes after that frame. And the reason I do that is because I can push the bead out of the way now, and I can get that last tiny bit of wire to just truncate so it finishes inside the frame. Now as long as you smooth that down, that's not going to hurt the bead, but the benefit of doing this is that you can't see it 
You can't see where it ends, and also it's not going to catch on anything. So allow me to show you, a little bit closer but slightly blurry, what I mean by concentrating, concentinering. Pliers are on one side, pliers are on the other side, at either end of that little coil, and you just tighten it up and it makes such a huge difference. So let's pop this down on the board now. Again, Sarah, I adore these beads. They are absolutely stunning. So whether you choose to go for a cooler metal or a warmer metal, I've gone for silver in the pre-live demonstration piece. And then today I have used a combination of raw copper, copper and a lovely rose gold colour to do that weaving, which gives you a, a sparkling lightness actually in that weaving. So as I mentioned before, you can weave all the way around. If wire weaving isn't for you, or if you want to make this pendant but in half the time, you've got two wires that come out the top of that disco bead, you can very simply go for a wrapped loop instead. In terms of alternatives, you can add these beautiful lucite flyer, flowers, rather, <laughs> more words that aren't words, instead of the fairy skirts. You could even use these fabulous hexagons in lieu of the beautiful mother of pearl. And these babies, these ceramic cube beads, gorgeous colours on these, it's lovely, lovely natural wash. Reminds me of 1970s earthenware. Not that you needed to know that, but it does. These are actually accessible to have two 18 gauge wires up the centre. So if you wanted to use those instead of the disco beads, it gives a completely different flavour and feeling. You've got lots of options. And that was just the one mix from the gorgeous Songs of Spring. As I mentioned to you at the head of the show, I didn't want to go over and over because I appreciate that you had an unboxing yesterday. However, I just want to show you my favourite strand again because I can't not. This Cloisanne collection is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Adore these. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous beads. And also, not to forget about... I want to say this is rose quartz. I can't imagine it would be anything else. It's a beautiful strand. So it's a lovely, lovely collection that I've been blessed to work with today. Let's just see if there are any questions before I leave you. Um, Donna loves the gemisms. That's good news because they're full. <laughs> There's plenty of them. Love them. Great job designing. Thank you, Judith. That's very kind of you. Absolutely delightful, says Maria. Emily says so very pretty. Melanie says beautiful. Janet says beautiful. Yes, Sarah, great choice on that bead, rose gold. Ah, yes, indeed. Absolutely gorgeous, says Deborah. Love them. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and lots and lots of big hearts from Emily. Thank you so very much for joining me. My name is Jem Hawks. I'm here with Jesse James Beads. We've worked today with Songs of Spring, which is the March Magical Mystery Bead Box. If you fancy one of those for your very own, I popped a link in the video description so you will be able to find that. Again with the Cloisanne, because why wouldn't I? It's absolutely stunning. Also, I don't do seed beads, but these are such gorgeous colours that, you know, I think I might. I think I might. I look forward to seeing you again here at Jesse James Bead's Facebook page in two weeks, which I think is going to be, hold on a second, is it going to be the 27th? Yeah, the 27th of April, 27th of April, and that's going to be, I want to say, 1pm Eastern time, but because I still don't really understand the world clock, it yeah, might not be, you never know. I'll be back here on the 27th of April and I've already decided what I'm going to make and I can't wait to share it with you. Beautiful, beautiful, more rose gold. Anyway, I shall love you and leave you. Thank you so much for having me working with you today in Jesse James Beads. Also, I will catch up with you very, very soon. Mwah! Bye for now.